Hi and welcome back to the 10 Minutes On podcast on the budget. I'm Aoife, the JPIT Communications intern, and I'm joined by Paul Morrison, JPIT Policy Advisor on all things economics. Paul, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Paul Morrison, and I talk about poverty, inequality, and economics to anyone who'll listen. Amazing. So this is the first woman to deliver the budget and the first Labour budget in 15 years. Can you take us through the headlines? Yeah, the budget would be momentous for those two reasons alone. But it's also a very important budget because it moves a lot of money, a lot more money than most budgets have done in modern times. It's it's going to increase taxes by about £40 billion pounds a year, which is even in the terms of the the sort of UK economy is a large amount. It's going to increase borrowing by about 30 billion a year, which is, again, a large amount. And the reason it did it was that in the run up to the last election, it became clear that public services were not doing well. Lots of them were on their knees, especially the criminal justice system and local government, but also the health service and various other things were not doing well. We also had as sort of the budget of 2024 in March suggested that there would be even larger cuts to public services next year and the year after, which nobody believed were attainable and nobody believed were going to happen. So what's happened is that essentially money has been spent to solve those problems. So there'll be a large slug of money into public services over the next two years. And actually, after that, public spending will stay fairly flat. There won't be large increases to departmental budgets. And there's a real question as to whether that two-year slug of money, large though it is, will be enough to bring our public services back to where, where we would like them to be. Amazing. Thank you. What effect will that have on poverty and people living in poverty? So that's what the churches have been focused on in the run-up to the election. And I think it's important to say most of my work is around poverty in the UK, but obviously there's poverty outside of the UK. And our contribution to that, or our contributing to alleviating that, is often in the form of overseas development aid. We made a we have made a commitment to spend 0.7% of GDP on that, and that was then cut two years ago to 0.5% of GDP. This budget doesn't start to bring us back to where we want to be. So in terms of poverty internationally, we're not increasing our contribution. Within the UK, the first thing to say is that public services are important for everyone. So if public services are functioning and are working better, that will help those who experience poverty, just as it will help everybody else in society. But in terms of spending directed specifically at those who experience poverty, there's actually very, very little in this budget. So there's a small amount towards increasing breakfast clubs. There is a technical change to universal credit because you have to wait for money for a month at the start of universal credit, for five weeks, in fact. The Department of Broken Pensions will lend you your will lend you money to tide you over, and then you have to pay it back. The rate at which it's paid back has been reduced. So you stay in debt for longer, but you pay less. So it will help with people who experience destitution. Lots of people who turn up at food banks are are repaying this debt. So that will help. But it's not really a spending commitment because that money will be repaid. And there were some other things around Carers Alliance, various other tweaks, which could be said to be directed at people are experiencing poverty, but it's really not much. But the most important thing that's happening to people who experience poverty is that the last government had said they were going to cut two to three billion pounds from disability benefits. And they were going to do that by essentially changing the criteria, making it harder to qualify for disability benefits. And that will affect 400,000 people and it will cost cost each of those people just over £5,000 a year. That cut is still going to happen. Lots of the campaigners thought that the Labour government wouldn't go through with it, but they are going to go through with it. 
And that will have serious impacts on lots of people. And when I was talking to people who experienced poverty about what, what, what was hoped for in the budget, doing something with that cut came very high up the com list of priorities in people's conversation. So even though 70 billion pounds extra was spent, that cut continues. And that, that, feels, that feels really disappointing. Yeah, definitely. I think what you said is really powerful there and it explains it really well. So thank you. But we've we've focused on poverty. Are there any other big things in the budget that should be important for people to know? OK, here's the bit where everybody turns off their podcast machine, where I say the words fiscal rules. But that was a really important. The really important thing is essentially the chancellor sets out a set of rules which they'll say, I'm going to keep with it. I'm not going to spend any more money than this. And they were changed and they were changed fairly sensibly. So assets that the government have will count against the fiscal rules, whereas previously they didn't. If that if that hasn't has bored you, what, what will cheer you up is the particular set of fiscal rules are known in the Treasury as per snuffle which sounds like a small creature that sort of nibbles and things, but it's actually public sector net financial liabilities is the uh, technical term. But that also means that borrowing can increase and still stay within the fiscal rules, which is, you know, which is viewed as helpful. I think the other big story, and I, it's not really been covered in the press, I think largely because it's quite difficult to get it out of the, out of the treasury documents, is around increased investment, green technology and in energy and things like that. And some of that is government money. Some of that is government money leveraged against private sector money. So the net effect is still is still quite hard to work out. But in terms of departments with the highest percentage increase in spend, it was actually it was actually the, in the energy department. So it feels unlikely that that's going to reduce energy bills and things like that, but it does feel very likely that if we are to get to our climate change targets, that money is going to help. Again, I'm. it's very hard to say whether that's going to get us there or how far that will get us along that road. And I think that will come out in the next weeks and months. But they, they are the, the sort of the, the other big stories. But I think was really important what the impression I've got by the end of it is that there is a lot of money being spent, but most of it is about shoring up what we have as opposed to buying more. The one place where we're going to get more is around that green technology. And again, it's not clear how much more we get from that. That makes sense. And I, I love that it's called Pusnafo. I think that that's incredible. I think that I've been be saying that word much too much over the last day, just because it <laughs> amuses me. I, th I think that should be the the official term for it. We use the acronym from now on. I have one question that I did not prepare you for that I've just thought about. If you could sum up the budget in one sentence, what would it be? Digging in, holding ground. So I think that that sums up very nicely what you've said. Well. Thank you very much, Paul, for your insight and your expertise. I've enjoyed listening to your economics. And thank you to our listeners for listening to another episode of the 10 Minutes On podcast. If you'd like to learn more, head to the JPIT website to read Paul's blog on the budget. And if you enjoyed this episode, check out our other episodes and share it with those you know. Thanks for listening.